Ciao friends and welcome to the whiteboard. In this episode we talk about one to many relationships. The whiteboard is a format where we explore in a more graphical way using the whiteboard a few concepts that sometimes are not immediately clear when you just work with the user interface of Power BI or by reading the DAX formulas. This is the case of uh, how the model works, how the relationships work, and we start with the one-to-many relationship, which is the more classical way to create relationships in Power BI and in Tabular. So let's go to the whiteboard. Let's start with this uh, simple Contoso model where we see the classical sales amount divided by product brand. If we take a look at the data model, this is a data model we often use in our examples. It's a classical star schemas where every table, uh, every table that you call a dimension, like store, customer, product, and date, is connected through a one-to-many relationship to the sales table. We can see this better in the, uh, in the whiteboard. And we want to think about what is the meaning of this one-to-many relationship. Because actually the, the relationship is, uh, is a way to transfer a filter in uh, Power BI or in Tabular. So we know that if I filter something in the store table or in the product table through this uh, one-to-many relationship that propagates the filter from the one side to the many side, we also filter the sales table. And this is the reason why in our Power BI model, we can see that by filtering the product brand, which is an attribute in the product table, we filter the value of sales amount, which is something that we obtain by looking at the content of the sales table. So this is how the relationship work. But what happens when we define a one-to-many relationship? What is the meaning and the implication for that? Well, first of all, when we define a one-to-many relationship, we always have two tables. Let's just move this a little bit. We have two tables. One is on the one side and one is on the many side. And we represent the many side with a star, which means that for each value we have uh, in the key column in the one side of the relationship, we could have multiple rows with the same value on the many side. Same for B, and we can have multiple rows with B and so on. So let's say that this is the key column, and when you create a relationship in a Tabula model, you only use one column to define the relationship. Now, Defining a one-to-many relationship actually doesn't mean that you must have one and many rows. What it actually means is that you can have zero or one rows on the one side and zero to many multiple rows on the many side. Let me clarify this with a few examples. What happens if in the key column of the one side table you have two or more rows with the same value? you get an error. You cannot try to create the relationship one to many if you have a two duplicated uh, values on the one side for the key column. And if you already created the model and you try to process the model and at a certain point, uh, two rows with the same value for the key appears when you refresh the table, you get an error and the table is not processed at all. Which means that we are defining a constraint. We call this a unique constraint on the key column on the one side of the table. Now, doesn't mean that we need many rows on the uh, multi on the on the many side of the relationship. Well, actually, no. We could have a perfectly valid table if we didn't have any rows with A on the many side. So if this was always B, that's fine. In other words, it's not guaranteed that a value on the one side will actually exist on the many side. So we could have zero rows on the many side with A, one, two, three, or more rows. So there are no constraints at all. But actually, we are lacking a constraint that is actually what we are used to see in a relational database where we create a foreign key a constraint on a database like SQL Server, for example. When you define a foreign key constraint in SQL Server, we are actually saying whatever I write in the column that belongs to this constraint on the many side of the constraint must exist 
on the one side. Well, actually, this is not the case for tabular. Let me clarify this with a few examples. So if I have here A, B, C, and E, uh, we are missing the D, what happens if I have, let's remove this a little bit, what happens if we have on the many side rows that contains value in the key that don't exist on the one side? So what happens if we have, uh, for example, D? Is this an error? No, this is not an error. If we have A, B, C, D, E, these uh, are values that exist on the one side, but this value doesn't exist on the one side and actually it's still a, a relationship that works. We will see in a separate video that this is an invalid relationship that actually generates a blank row on the one side, but this is something that we will see later. Now, the thing is that the constraint, the only constraint that a one-to-many relationship creates for your model is on the one side. So on the one side, there is a unique constraint for your one-to-many relationship. So we, what you are actually creating is a, a constraint in the model and an automatic propagation of the filter so that when you filter what any attribute, any column on the one side of the relationship, the filter is always propagated to the many side of the relationship. The other way around depends on the filter propagation, but this is, again, is, is a topic for uh, another video. So we have seen that the one-to-many relationship is actually a relationship that should be called zero or one to zero to many uh, relationship. But of course, we use one to many because it's uh, more intuitive and actually describes the behavior in 99% of the cases. But it's good to know that actually these relationships have this uh, constrained behavior on the tabular model because it's different from what many people are used to think in terms of relationships when they come from a relational database background. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode of the whiteboard. See you again in the next episodes and enjoy DAX. <laughs>